special masala tea for you. My grandmother made it. I told her you are under the weather since so many days, and she gave this, saying it will be good for your health. Oh, my sweet little cherry, uh, uh, you are so good. Uh, uh, Chew. Um, thank you, Professor. Hi, friends. I'm Cherry, and here is our loving Professor, Doctor Oxygen. I think we will have to cancel the session today, as he seems unwell. No, no, Cherry. I'm good enough to teach. This makes me feel better. As you wish, Professor. But what will we study today? Hmm. Your grandmother's tea has given me a good idea. We will study about air today. Chew. Oh. <coughs> tea and air, Professor. Oh, my little cherry. Let us all go for the sci-fi ride. and your questions will be answered just as tea is a mixture of water milk sugar and maybe even a few spices but we can't tell its components apart while drinking it air is also a mixture of various gases but we can't really tell its components apart by just looking at it but experimentally we can prove that air is a mixture of gases and also a few other properties of air so let's try out a few lab experiments now to prove the following air is a mixture of gases and water vapor and dust is present in air let's begin with first lab experiment to prove that air is a mixture of several gases start by placing a gas jar stand in a trough then fill 1/3 of the trough with water now dissolve a teaspoonful of caustic soda in the water and add a few drops of ink to it why the caustic soda and why the ink did you say well you are going to find out soon Now stir the water with a glass rod and place a candle on the gas jar stand and light it Now we know that a candle requires oxygen to burn so the very fact that our candle is burning indicates the presence of oxygen in the air around us Okay so is air all oxygen then To find out, let's continue with our experiment. Cover the candle now with the gas jar. You will see that after some time, the burning candle dies out. Also, the level of water rises up a little in the gas jar. Do you know why this happens? Well, as the candle burns, it uses up the limited oxygen inside the gas jar. When all the oxygen inside the jar is used up, the candle dies out. Now that oxygen is no longer taking up space inside the gas jar, water rises up to fill up the space left behind. Now, it is a known fact that as a candle burns, it uses up oxygen, but it also produces a gas. Can you guess which gas that is? Well, it's carbon dioxide so the question arises if the gas carbon dioxide is formed inside the jar should it not take up the space left behind by the used up oxygen why is there still space in the jar which water rises up to fill well there is still space in the jar because the carbon dioxide is absorbed by the caustic soda that we dissolved in the water earlier This is a known property of caustic soda. Now, you know why we put that caustic soda in the water. We wanted to get the carbon dioxide away from the air in the jar, just as we removed oxygen earlier by burning. Okay. So, did you notice something about the water that rose? Well, it only rose a bit and then stopped, didn't it? Now, at this point, 
we know that there is no oxygen or carbon dioxide in the jar. So what is stopping the water from rising further? Obviously, there is some kind of gas still left behind. We can conclude from this that air is a mixture of oxygen, carbon dioxide and some other gas or gases. So, you've just proved that air is a mixture of gases. That's amazing, Professor. I will go home and tell Grandma that her tea is similar to air. <laughs> she might not understand that, Cherry. So, I think you will have to prepare and show her the experiment side by side. That's tough, Professor. I don't know how to make tea. Maybe you can help us once you get well? I will be happy to help Cherry, but that's for later. Right now, we need to learn more. Okay, Professor. I'm all set for the sci-fi ride. Let's go! Let us perform an experiment now to prove the presence of water vapour in air. Fill half a steel glass with water. Then put ice cubes in it. Wipe the outer surface of the steel glass with a clean dry cloth. What do you observe after a few minutes? A large number of tiny water droplets can be seen on the outer surface of the glass. Where did the water droplets come from? Now, it is a property of water vapour that it forms liquid water when cooled. This is exactly what has happened in our experiment. Water vapour present in the warmer air around the glass has condensed as water drops on the cool outer surface of the glass. So, you have proved the presence of water vapour in air. I'm loving these experiments, Professor. I always used to wonder about these water droplets. Today, I finally know the reason. I told you, Cherry. All these are wonders of science. Since now you know about the presence of water droplets in the air, let me tell you about another constituent of air. More still! Which constituent this time? Dust particles. What? Dust? Is it a part of air too? Sci-Fi Ride is here for the rescue. We know that air is made up of different gases. But are solid dust particles also present in air? Let us confirm this through an experiment. It's dark in our little chemistry lab because the windows have been covered with black chart paper. We have just left a tiny hole on the chart paper pasted on a window facing the sun. What do you see as you look at this hole? A small beam of sunlight shines through and in this beam of light, some particles can be seen moving around crazily. This is dust. Well, you have just seen for yourself that solid dust particles are also a part of air. Professor, all this study about air reminded me of hot air balloon. Can we go for a hot air balloon ride in the coming vacations? Sure, but before that, there is something about hot air balloons here. Do you know? Hot air balloons work on the very basic scientific principle that warmer air rises in cooler air. Wondering how? Well, inside the hot air balloon, hot air is present and outside it, cooler air is present. Hot air is lighter than cool air. So, it can rise above the cooler air and this makes the hot air balloon to rise. The hot air is present in a lightweight bag called the envelope and suspended beneath the envelope is a gondola or wicker basket which carries passengers and usually a source of heat 
which in most cases is an open flame. The balloon starts to descend when the hot air present inside the balloon starts to cool. Okay, now is the time for a recap of all that we have learned today. Pay attention! Air is a mixture of several gases. Water vapor is present in air. And so are dust particles. I loved today's session. And see, the tea helped you to recover fast. You haven't sneezed at all. I am really happy that you learnt all about air and thank your grandma for this amazing tea. I will, Professor, but you still need to rest. So, friends, that's all for today. We will see you soon again. Keep learning! <laughs>